it can uh, understand what to do or how to react when there is a, a major incident. Uh, not that there ever will be, but it's always good to have the education background in case something does happen. Uh, we've also met with uh, Lieutenant Falk from RPD, and we're trying to get some interagency training going on between the both of us so that our guys feel a little bit more accepted by the RPD and we can work together interagency. Um, there's a few things that... Uh, Just on that point, you talked about uh, devices to communicate back into the... Right, right. right. We're uh, actually uh, receiving one more radio this year from RPD, one for the main office, the security office, and one for the uh, officer in charge in the field so that he will have one and he can communicate with the RIPD during the day also. It won't just have to go through the office. If he sees an incident, he can jump right on it and close down the park if we need to. Uh, as, as with missing children, we would close down the park immediately. Um, <clears throat> we also have, uh, as, as Fred had said before, we have uh, allocated 40 spaces to uh, Seaside Johnny's, but if they're not being used, we will use them for patrons. We'll, we'll have the park and attendants move patrons there. Hopefully uh, it'll be, because it's closer to the entrance, we'll use more handicap, you know, put that more to handicap spaces in there so that this way, you know, the handicap will be able to, to get closer access to the beach. Uh, there's been a few incidents, I don't know if you've uh, been brought up to date, there's been a few incidents already at the park, so we've actually had a preseason start with the guards, and we, we're continuing to put one guard during the day right now and one guard at night, two shifts. But, but clarify what they've been, they've been, we think it's youth vandalism, right? Yeah, there's, there has been youth vandalism. Uh, we've had approximately 10 to 12 of the posts, the rope posts that uh, we go around the pond have been uh, broken, but these have been repaired by maintenance and replaced. Uh, there's been some graffiti done throughout the park. Uh, there's been a couple incidents uh, where the youths have been found in the park drinking. Uh, for all these incidents, I've had the uh, guards create an incident report so that with, this way we have a record of what's going on in the park. In the past, we didn't have that. We didn't have an incident report where the officer would sit down and actually write something down to the supervisor, and I would make a copy of it and give it to the uh, park director also so he can have it in his file. Um, we're also doing daily reports. So this, yes, sir. May I ask for the graffiti? Do you interact with the Rye Police Department? Or yes, we do. Yes, we do. Uh, as soon as we uh, we have an incident, we call the Rye PD. They make an incident report, but we also yeah, make right. one internal. Solution list, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, we haven't really caught anybody yet. Yeah, but you know, just they they catalog the tags usually. Yes. And yes. When they get them, they get them for all of it. Yeah. But I, I believe these are mostly children. It's not really tags that they're putting on the uh, park. It's mostly foul language. Wonderful. Uh, let me just add, I mean, th this is another show or uh, sign of progress between the city of Rye and, and Rye Town. Um, the police commissioner was involved in the interview process. Uh, um, Joe works very well with our lieutenants in, in, on the patrol side. He's instituted some training. Are we going to get into the deputization? Are we going to? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Next, that's the next uh, item. We'll talk about the dog. Well, in fact, actually, why don't we talk about it now? No. No, or do you want to say Okay, yeah. we'll come back to that then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the next okay. item after. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much, Joe. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. welcome, by the way. Good luck. Thank you. Congratulations, Thank you. Thanks. Um, and the last part of this uh, is the cultural events and development report, which, um, which Bill can bring you up to date on. Thank you. I can't believe you get there last Saturday. I missed it. I was really trying to get there. Um, Hi. You all have the report, so I won't go through all the details, just that there's been a lot of things going on, uh, even though the big money doesn't start coming in until after Memorial Day. We have had events going on, uh, the ongoing uh, boot camp by the beach, which does generate income during the time when no other money is coming in to the park. What, and time, are they, what time are those, uh, what time do they start? 9.15. And I, I got to get down there for one of those. Huh? And they do uh, they do one on Saturdays. It's a little later in the day. There's a it's a very busy site. Uh, they got most days. There's two groups. There's a 9:15 group and 11 o'clock group. Uh, and there's like a, a sort of beginners group on the weekends. Uh, she's filled every niche that, that she can find. They have a website or are they yes. connected? Bootcampbythebeach.com. Okay. And she also has uh, recruited a, a yoga person uh, for, again for this year. My special. She's going to start. Uh, uh, doing that actually on Thursdays, I think. 
So uh, we have those things, and of course you all know about the uh, Art of the Park program that Heather Patterson organized and carried out last weekend. Unfortunately, the weather was definitely not in our favor, but she, uh, despite you know that, uh, we still generated income for the town. It looks like it'll be about a thousand dollars. Well, income. not just the income, but what, I mean, yeah. it's a great program. You had yeah. the, the as an artist painting from the park, right? Different yes. scenes in the park, and then a, a show after that of the, that. Artist. It was an auction of of those Did paintings, I, and there was a reception at, uh, with food uh, at the pavilion, and there was music all day long from eleven o'clock till six o'clock, plus entertainment at the reception. So. Uh, we're generating more and more of the idea that the park is a place to Look, go. Do me a favor, Mr. Lawyer. What, what, what's going to happen between now and the next meeting? Because I, 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 I always feel like I check to check the fact, fail to check the website, and I find out after the fact rather than before the. Well, what, we, what's uh, going to happen this month? You know, the, uh, this things month? are coming up uh, in well. Was, I mean, we're going to be the big focus is obviously on the opening of the park right, you know, right. on Memorial Day weekend. So there, and I think thanks to the hard work of the staff and the, yep. and all the park rangers, uh, it's the whole idea is to be a very visitor friendly place. We want people to feel welcome, and I know we've said this from t time to time, and, and I think you you're aware that uh, that uh, we have a uh, staff orientation meeting coming up this Saturday at 11 o'clock. So we're really focusing right now. Our effort is to we're a park, we're a beach, we're a place where people go to have safe, fun, family entertainment, and that's what we want to convey that message, and we're working very hard to do that, and it, we realize that it's going to, we want to start the first day, and every day wants to be on top of the situation, and that's why it's so important that we're training not just the cashiers, but also the parking attendants. Everybody has to realize that they're uh, ambassadors for the park. Well, absolutely. I know you've been working on quality control, and, and, and I want to See us take another step up, so both Disney and Playland Park. Are from our <laughs> yes. staff now. now, I, I did want to put in a plug uh, for the, the good support that we're getting from the Friends of Rye Town Park, Absolutely. and also the Rye City uh, uh, Rye Town Park Advisory Committee of the City of Rye, who's looking to generate a lot more activities yeah. in the park. They were kind of waiting, I think, until uh, Heather's program was over, but they they have a whole list of activities they're looking to institute at the park. And some are very short term, can be done right away. Others are longer term, like the idea of some kind of a playground of things that kids could do at the park. So we're working with those things yeah, I, I, to move we had forward. had a presentation last month, and I, you know, again, Mike Corbett's group and the Friends of Ride Town Park, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, a, a lot of great ideas. And, uh, you know, you that's know, what I'm going to be concentrating on, is trying ideas. to get them uh, really yeah. into place. We can't do everything at once, but we're going to look at what we can do. And then, just to answer Goldie's question from before, the first concert's going to start on uh, June 28th. They're Tuesday nights. We're doing three. We're, we're holding a couple Tuesdays free for rain dates in case right. we have severe thunderstorms. We will have them rain or shine, but if it's a severe thunderstorm, then we will have to cancel. So we are that the next push in terms of the press, in addition to just reminding everybody about the permits, which is what we just talked about earlier, but our next big push is to promote these concerts, which are free. We invite people to come, bring their food. They, you know, they can buy food at Seaside Johnny's if they want to. And, uh, you know, these have been well attended, as we said before, and they're open to everybody. We're trying to have a little bit of different talent this year. We have one um, Cuban, um, um, sort of Cuban jazz type music that's going to be performing. We have... Um, uh, a steel band, a you know, steel drum band, it's sort of Caribbean band. So we, you know, we have a variety of things. It's all music you can dance to, sing to, have fun with. So we really want this to be a, to celebrate the beauty of Rye Town Park. And when the sun's setting and you look out over the water, how great it is! Great, Supervisor. Okay. Actually, um, sorry to interrupt, but I just want to encourage Mr. Lawyer, who I think does a great job, by the way, to again leverage the cable channel, certainly the Village yes. of Worcester. You don't have to give us anything camera ready. In fact, talk to Tom. We, we, you know, we'd love to promote the art in the parks, the concerts, even the fireworks. Okay. You know, and I'm sorry I missed the art in the park. That's when I was on the boat, by the way, in oh. Chicago with the guy at the counter. Yeah. But otherwise, yes, well, I'll, I'll get that. We do, we, have, uh, we do have the city of Rye on us, but we'll, we'll have to get the town of Rye and the village of Portchester. Talk to Tom, actually. If you, actually uh, two two follow-ups. That's an excellent suggestion, Mayor Pilla. What we need to do is we need to publicize these events uh, more fully. Uh, let's work with all the municipalities we have. And then the second thing, I want to follow up on the suggestions from both the Friends and my Corbett's group uh, and, and see if we can't get some of those implemented this year. So mm -hmm. we've presented some very nice ideas. Let's 
And let's do everything we can to encourage the implementation. Well, we're getting down to so. Uh, the last thing I just yep. want to mention is that there, there will be at Rytown Park on the uh, Sunday, June 5th, is the Westchester uh, Children's Museum is having a benefit, and it's open to everybody if you want. Uh, there's a fee involved, but <coughs> it's, a, it's called an Explorathon, and there'll be live music, and there'll be children's activities all over the northern part of Rytown Fantastic. Park. Is that, is that when they're exploring the use of the pavilion as, as opposed to the... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what Sorry. time is that? I mean, it's uh, nine nine a.m. to noon. Okay. Wonderful. Sunday, June fifth. Thank Sunday, you, thank 5th. you, Bill. Okay. Twenty eighth, June. Okay. Okay, Fred. Uh, we're just going to have to bring it, wrap That's it up. About yep. it, I, Beautiful. I, I want to reiterate what Bill said about the Friends of Right Town Park. If you see uh, many of the flowers that are blooming there, and and the uh, other. Um, bushes and things, they do a fantastic job. We're job. blessed. Thank you. Yes, I got to say, we absolutely are. And you, you guys have been supporting us for so long. And what, we don't want to forget you at all. Thank you yeah, so and, much. For and in your packets, while we're on that subject, the Friends of Rytown Park has offered to split the maintenance cost for the pond treatments uh, so that we can wow. perhaps prevent the algae uh, bloom. Uh, uh, you don't need a motion to sign that agreement. Do you, Bishop? Do you need a motion um, on that agreement? I don't think so, to okay. be honest with you. It's only $1,700. Okay. Uh, I'm just saying, you have it in our package. Yeah. You don't have to vote. Hey, I, I see some other friends here sure tonight. Did, did anybody want to come up? Their and their recognition. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so thank much. You. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, okay. Uh, I see we're running out of time. Uh, the, the supervisor's got to vote, so we've got about another 10, 12 minutes. Uh, I want to go through the dog policy, yes. and I want to give Mr. Vitti a chance to talk if he wanted to, to come up at the end. So, dog policy. Well, um, uh, now, Mr. Noto, did, did come you up. have concerns I, about it? You want me to tee it up? Is that what you Well, yeah, why I, don't you tee it up? I know, Mr. I think our attorney had some concerns. Okay. Um, did you want to, yeah. The, uh, uh, we, let me give you some background, and I, right. I'll, I'll tell you what I, what I think. And in, in, in the brief time that I got the phone call Friday afternoon from Bishop to, based on a meeting that was held on Friday in, in Rye, um, some of the relevant history is that the, um, when Rye Brook became a, a village, the town of Rye uh, eliminated its Department of Public Safety and its police force, so there is no police force. It, this issue had come up uh, actually a little over 10 years ago, um, and just to be clear, under the criminal procedure law, any appearance ticket that is issued uh, is to appear in a designated local criminal court. Now, according to our judges in the town of Rye, which is, you know, the, our ultimate authority on this, uh, the designated local criminal court is the court having original jurisdiction in the territorial area in which the offense occurred. In this case, Rye Town Park is physically located in the city of Rye, a self-contained incorporated municipality. Therefore, any ticket issued in the town of Rye Park would be uh, returnable in the city of Rye. The town court here in Rye Town has taken the position, uh, the correct legal position, that uh, under the New York State law, uh, any, uh, jur the initial jurisdiction for any offense committed in Rye Town Park is the city of Rye, and under the state law, the town of Rye court uh, will not accept jurisdiction uh, on any matter uh, in, Rye, in uh, Rye Town Park. Um, now, the town of Rye in 2003 created a Department of Public Safety, uh, which was at the time, according to the legislative history, was for home, homeland security uh, communications, uh, which was then abolished in January of 2008 uh, when the new board took office. So at this point, we have no Department of Public Safety. Uh, as I have looked into this, and I can do more research, uh, the, there is an, a fairly efficient solution to the problem, and that would be that the City of Rye Police Department uh, hire or appoint a code enforcement officer for Rye Town Park at the park expense. I don't think the City of Rye should have to pay for it. Um, that would provide two things for us. It would provide accountability because this individual would be trained and a professional and would be accountable to the City of Rye PD. And secondly, we would have, we would have jurisdiction. So a ticket issued in Rye Town Park by this code enforcement officer would, it, would be returnable in city court in Rye, which is obviously you know, nearby. Um, it would not cost the City of Rye any money. Uh, appropriately, the Park Commission should pay for it, but it would, I think, eliminate uh, the problem to the extent that there is a problem, which is uh, who issues the tickets. But I think, you know, for us to create a Department of Public Safety again. Oh, but wait, 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 oh. wait, sorry. I mean, you know, uh, 
the um, I think the public at home is going to see a clash of cultures. In other words, you know, in the sense that, uh, you know, there's, it seems to me that there's a rational way of doing with things and then there's the government way of doing things. And so, so I guess, so, so uh, the question I have is, uh, isn't there some way to do it the way we'd like to do it? I don't understand why you need to create a Department of Public Safety in order for our security people who are already on site to issue a warrant. Mayor, Mayor Pilla? Is it plausible? So basically the problem we're trying to solve is to create an enforcement mechanism for things like dogs not on a leash. So tickets can be written I in the believe that is, course, yeah. inappropriate court. Right. In fact, actually, right. maybe but so I, I'm not, so we, said, we started with the end. Maybe, uh, Mayor French, you want to give the background but, but to can this? I, can I just ask, and Doug probably knows the answer. Can we have these guys, like some of Joe Nieto's men, deputized as well, that, limited code enforcement officers for yeah, this That was the plan, but purpose, the, the, yeah. the violations would be come to Rye Town Court. That's what we walked away with Friday, and you're saying that really no, should go to Rye right Town Court. Okay, let's, hold, on. So hold on, hold on. There's, okay. there's two issues here. One issue is can our guys uh, issue the summons or the, the fines? And then the second issue, what's the right court once they've issued them, where do they go? So let's, let's start with the first issue, which is, is it, as, as Mayor Pill is suggesting, can our guys issue the summons? I think that was our desire. We, we, we sent down Friday with the uh, police commissioner, Rye, who you know, uh, you know previously had expressed some concerns, but uh, felt comfortable that, for very limited purposes, dogs off the leash and alcoholic consumption, uh, you know, our guys would be, you know, he was happy for our guys to do it. Now, you have to tell me legally whether they can do it. I, I think that you know, one suggestion is that they be deputized in some fashion, or one or two people deputized. But legally, can our security guards? issue those, you know, summonses or, or fines? Not unless they are working under the direct jurisdiction of the Rye City PD. We do not have any authority because the town of Rye has no public safety authority or jurisdiction. So I think Mayor Pillow. Do IMA it? Yeah, do an IMA exactly, and so uh, long as it's not like, you know. It doesn't even have to be an IMA. I mean, if the city of Rye that. essentially yeah. deputized it, which is an excellent suggestion, yeah. then they are accountable to the commissioner in Rye. So there, there you have that accountability issue so that if there's any issue with, with their conduct, there is a procedure and infrastructure in place to deal with it. Okay. So Joe seems very competent. I mean, you know, give the guy, uh, his guys a camera and a pad right. and I mean, go it, wild. So right? there, there, there's an infrastructure in place in the okay. city of Rye that can accomplish all of our goals. It's just, I'm, it's okay, so the first point is, so, so then I guess, Mayor French, what we need to figure out is if you guys you have, have to, to if you want to deputize and what that involves. That's the commissioner the would be able to advise you how, how he would handle it. But right. first and of all, people who are code enforcement yeah. officers are trained. And, and as, as Joe indicated, he's, well, he's just, doing some training, but the, the, the county and the city and the towns and the villages that have police departments have a training program for these people, and they have to be trained and meet certain requirements and certifications, and then they are hired, and then they become code enforcement officers. So like a, like a so, parking enforcement officer, it's the same principle. So, so there's two things. The first thing is so we should evaluate uh, the cost of code enforcement officers versus deputizing our guys and, and, and we'll have the city of Rye obviously since you'll be you know, taking uh, Mayor French I think you'll have to sit down with your police commissioner and figure out so that's the first thing the first point the second point is in terms of the court uh, can't the city of Rye uh, sort of waive their right it, to hear it and, and I don't understand why Rye Town Park sorry to interrupt but yeah, why bother, bother? I, I, <laughs> I thank you there. I agree yeah um, I, I get I agree with the mayor on this one. I don't know why the city of Rye would want to do that. Yes, the answer to your question is if, if the city court of Rye wanted to specifically refer all some kind of cases to a, to, the, to a neighboring court, they could do that by agreement with that court. So essentially there would have to be a referral, we call it, from city court of Rye to, to town court of Rye for cases under, you know, whatever category we put them in. Okay, so, so, um, so, so, I th so I think, so look, there's a, so the policy okay. matter is. Uh, uh, wait. May I interrupt for a second? Oh, sorry, please, yeah. I, I don't know why, if a city, because here's the, the, the logistical problem. To the extent that someone might challenge the ticket and, and demand a trial, right. then the code enforcement officer, if he or she had to testify, would have to travel to Rye Town Court and testify as opposed to city court in, in Rye where they are employed. So. From a logistical standpoint, it would make sense to keep everything in the city of Rye. Uh, well, I think what uh, – so tonight we highlighted the issues. Mm -hmm. The goal is, is to enforce dogs on a leash. 
after 9 a.m. That's that's the number one goal. And 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 the our staff has been uh, bitten, you know, harassed. We'll hear from Mr. Vitti in a second. Uh, you know, uh, you know, and, and quite frankly, uh, uh, you know, I think it's unfair. And we need to be able to enforce the rules of the park. Um, and so that's the first point. And I think there was a you know policy decision. I think we're all agreed that we want to enforce the rules of the park. And then we obviously want to do it the most efficient, safe, and cost-effective. Is it only after 9 a.m.? So right. after 9 a.m., yeah. And before 9 a.m., what happens? They're off the leash. 5 a.m. to 9 a.m., they're allowed to be off leash. 5 a.m. to Wait, 9 a.m. That... Oh, but you have designated, designated spaces, designated. right? Designated so there's like a, that 5 anyway, Well, I, I don't want to get into that again. Okay. I just want to – what I want to do is uh, – so I think that ultimately the city of Ride, uh, Mayor French, I was going to ask you to meet with your, your <clears throat> police commissioner in terms of deputization, if, if you're comfortable, or you prefer a code enforcement officer if we can cross that out. And the second issue is in terms of the courts. If your courts are overcrowded for some reason, you want to refer them to the right town court, I can't imagine why we couldn't do that as well. So it sounds like we have some work to do. Uh, we have a policy desire here that's been expressed, and we now just need to do some fault work. I think, uh, so I don't think there's much more to do tonight. Thank you. Uh, uh, is there any other comments? Uh, not to, yep. kick, it, not to kick it to death, yep. but, um, and, and we're talking about dog <laughs> policy here. But um, we mentioned public drinking, and that's something that, like, may be something like state penal, so the whole they may need to be sworn officers. So, you, A, you'll want to distinguish that, I'm sure, and, B, do we, is that what we need? We, looking at. we probably do, but maybe we can get the dog and not the other, because this is a local. Well, the, the uh, local police do, like, uh, underage drinking, those kinds of things are, are handled uh, by the local courts. Uh, the statute, I think, is the beverage and control law. It's, yeah. it's, it's different. It's not a misdemeanor, and it's not technically a crime. They may need to be sworn officers right. for that. Right. Uh, sure. In order to do a deposition and a supporting deposition, which accompanies these p tickets usually, yes, the mayor is correct again, that there would have to be some kind of, uh, you know, certification, and they'd have to have some sort of training, and they'd have to be sworn officers. So, so again, having that, that city infrastructure with the, with the police department makes it so much easier because it's there as opposed to sure. starting from scratch. Yep. Well, you know, you, you're, the first word you mentioned this tonight was accountability, and that's really where we stand is it all makes sense. However, if we're not hiring the individuals uh, and if, if they're not reporting into the police commissioner, we want to make sure those areas or those lines of accountability are in place. Right, we, and I think if you hired them, then we have that, and you're, then we, you, could, you could deal with a situation um, where you don't have an errant control officer doing something inappropriate and then causing other problems, and, uh, you know, that can happen. And so French, I, if you I, hire them, you, you can keep you, the you, revenue. How about that? There's and the and you keep the revenue. And, again, I, in fairness, the city would be reimbursed for the cost of the officer. I think that's only fair. I mean, I don't right. think it should be your, your, an additional expense to the city. Right. But clearly, because the park is within the city of Rye, as Crawford Park is in the village of Rye Brook, it's their, their public safety responsibility, and, and the town, which is looking to do less, not more, it would be appropriate for them to handle it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Noto. Uh, There's also, you might also want to consider maybe a title. It might be semantics, but dog warden as well. They have dog wardens in okay. municipalities. Great. Right, good suggestion. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure whether we can even contract out a service like this if we needed to. No, it wouldn't be a contract. It wouldn't be contracting out the service per se, but we would be paying the city of Rye to hire a dog warden or a constable, and they would be reimbursed for it via an IMA. But I wouldn't call it a contract out of it, but because we're within their jurisdiction, so we're not. It's not out. If you brought someone in from Bedford to do it and said, would the Bedford PD do it, that would be different, but that would be okay. unlikely. In terms, there's nothing really that the, nothing that, I don't think there's anything the commission needs to vote on, uh, but I think, so Mayor French, I think it's just you guys getting comfortable from Rye City. Well, the, the, the City Council of Rye is going to have a public hearing to change our local <clears throat> ordinance around the dog leash law, which will allow, based on the, the will of this commission from the last meeting, off leash in designated areas from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m., and after 9 a.m., they have to be on a leash. Perfect. Now, may, I, may I just, uh, yeah. you know, as the, as, the, as the lawyer for the Rye Town Park Commission, I just want to put on the record the fact that the city, if the city of Rye takes a step whereby they are allowing unleashed dogs to, to, to be in, in our park, um, the commission has to be aware of the fact that if, there, if anyone is injured or bitten by a dog, the liability for that should really rest with the city of Rye, not with the Rye Town Park Commission. I don't think it's inherently fair that the residents of Rye Brook or Portchester or Rye, or Rye Town or Rye Neck should be saddled with the cost of a potential damage action for someone, for someone who's bit by a dog uh, because of a policy initiated by the city of Rye. So, I mean, I just want to 
you know, put you on notice. Well, that sure. We didn't initiate the policy. We were reacting. Yeah. Our understanding I, was. I just. Okay, well, but I'll just go through the facts. I, I don't want to. I'm not being on the to, spot, Mayor, but I just, you know, you can understand. We've had it, we've had documented incidents of people being bitten by dogs in our park, who are unleashed. And ergo, why we're even having the conversation about bleaching the dogs and enforcing it. So just be, we all have to be aware of the fact in a what is the litigious society we live in yeah. that someone's going to file a lawsuit, and I'm just not sure. It, you know, no, it was our fair. policy. But this is our policy. We adopted they're, they're this policy on April 20th. If, if it's the commission policy, well, then you're all in the boat together. If it's the city of Rye's policy no, city being imposed on you, then it's their problem. Well, they're codifying their law to, to follow our law. Follow right. your, well, then, and you're all, then as long as all of the commissioners are aware of the potential liability, it's fine. <laughs> you should have told us so that before we adopted this. Not law, right. No, but you know, I would have, but I didn't even know you did adopt it. Actually, right? can, I, can, I can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? What, what is the policy in Rye Brook for dogs? Can't be on a leash. I think there is a leash law. Yeah, because of the liability. Be off a leash. That's and what about Rye City? It's, yeah, it's also a state law. It's right. What is it? State law? You can never be off a leash. State law. Yeah. So what's what's Rye City? So how can we? How can we? How can we? How can we even? Over, how can well, there, we over as you know, there, there we've carved out exceptions. As Playland has done it at the at the beach, you know, they they allowed unleashed dogs in the winter time. We've we've done. How do, aren't we? So. Uh, absurd, aren't we usurping okay, state? Aren't we usurping state law? Right, right now, Rye City uh, has the law on the books that says the dog owner can have the dog loose in their own yard or a neighbor's yard that actually allows them to. But once it comes out into the street, the dog has to be leashed. Uh, and how can we usurp uh, state law? You can't. Actually, having the dogs having the dogs loose in Rye Town Park is going against state law. Well, let's, let me ask you. Let me ask. Let's 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 let's, let's take two steps back. In terms of, I mean, if Portchester doesn't allow dogs off leash at any time. That's right, Brooke does not. Of it's a different thing, though, right? The reality, say, right? I was going to say that we know what the reality is, and which is it's very difficult to enforce mm -hmm. because the only one who can enforce it in Rybrook are obviously our police officers who have many other responsibilities. But uh, that's not to say if, in fact, that we receive a call and there's, you know, people are egregious about it, and sometimes they are. It's very difficult that, to enforce. In, in Rye City? Well, I would, just, I would just say that. It, the, the courts have held that in parks, like Central Park, the park can set a policy around the leash law, and the courts will uphold that. It doesn't have, it's not usurping state law. You have state law, but parks can set a policy. Now, we had dogs running free all the time, and what our police department said to us is, what is the commission's policy around dogs off leash? So we floated out with the Central Park model, which, which was 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. in designated areas, they can be off leash. That's right. The city yeah. then responded to that because we are the jurisdiction that we have to change our code to be consistent with the policy of this commission. Now, if this commission doesn't want to do that, we're back to where we started months ago about how do we control the dog issue. And what, 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 what are the commissioner's thoughts? I mean, it's probably worth, in the light of this discussion, it's probably worth. You guys voted on it. On the we time. acted already, though, right? It's, I'm looking, reading the press release. I don't think I was here, was I? Uh, April 26th. No, 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 we discussed it. I guess yeah, my voted, is, the, the Rye Town uh, Park Commission voted at the April 26th meeting to modify the park's dog regulation during the in-season summer period. During that time, dogs will be allowed off the leash in the mornings up until 9 a.m. No, I, I understand that's our current policy. Well, I guess it, that out. We did not send that release out because the mayor of Rye said we should wait until we see what happens. Oh, which makes sense. But, but the oh, well, commission well, took well, action, let, yeah? Well, let's, let's, let's just... Let's just the let's let's just sorry. Uh, it's absolutely right that this commission voted in the current policy as it stands, as per this commission, is five to nine, or well, actually, I guess from dawn to nine a.m. Dogs off the leash. Now, in light of the conversation and the issues we've heard this evening, I'm simply asking the commission to revisit this issue and say, are we comfortable? With that before 9 a.m., um, and, and, and we have some legal liability here very clearly. That's, that's, that's one point. Um, the second point is to stay with this, see where we come out in terms of deputization, see how the enforcement goes between now and the next meeting is, is another thing, and leave it in place. I think, you know, the, the challenge here is like, as always, is to trying to find the right balance. Right balance between dog owners and um, and, and, and the public and, 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 and safety of the public. Now, before 9 a.m., 
you know, uh, Joe and Fred. I mean, what, what, how uh, is is there any? Do, is there a perceived risk at this point? Um, you know, or is it, is it in, in a designated area? Right now, uh, before 9 a.m., the park is not that that busy. So we kind of push them towards the uh, north end of the park, so they can they can stay 